This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Action Furnace. Fixed right or it's free. Drake on Play 107, he dropped a surprise album at midnight last night yeah. called Honestly Nevermind. We love some new Canadian content, mm-hmm. us here in the radio industry. It's nice. So I logged on to Twitter this morning. I was like, why is Forever 21 trending? So people are saying a lot of the songs on his album sound like they should be played in like clothing stores like Forever 21. Or H&M. Zara, Hollister, Le Chateau. When you listen to the music now, you Mm -hmm. can't help but laugh because it's so true. I picture myself looking through all of the jeans in that jean section, heading over to the cute sweaters, thinking that they're going to be good. And then you pull them off the rack and they have a stupid slow go on them. Slow go. (laughs) I was like, are you making up words over there? I don't uh, slogan. Okay, there you go. Slogan and logo put together. <laughs> it's early. Okay, so let's listen to a little bit of one of the songs that people are definitely saying will be in yeah. Forever 21 by next week. I've got a few examples. Okay. Oh, yeah. If I come around you, can I be myself? There it is. Wind up in a mirror just to see yourself. Next up, we have this one. Oh, yeah, for sure. Don't give up this okay, now this is the main one. This is the biggest one. It's called Massive. I can't help it. I'm so into you. <laughs> totally. I love Britney's text. It shouldn't be Forever 21 that we're talking about. She says, definitely should be played in Stitches or Urban Planet. <laughs> I have to complain about something. Please do. It's the passwords for e-transfers. Oh, yeah. Auto deposit all the way. I have auto deposit, but for some reason, some when some people send me, it still asks questions. So I don't know if it's like their bank. Oh, yeah. You have to have a security question or whatever. But sending somebody a question that they're not going to get the answer to is one of my biggest frustrations. I get it. Mm-hmm. I have a question. Can you change a security question with somebody's email address or do you have to delete the contact and redo the whole process no, I, of adding them? I believe you can change it, but it automatically will just go with the last one you asked if you don't change it. See, that's where I get frustrated because I don't know how to change it. And sometimes I'll resend money to someone months later and I'm, I don't even know the answer to the question that I originally wrote because mm-hmm. it was a relevant question that like, day. What, what night are we going for dinner? Yeah. Like, what like, color uh... are my pants today? And I'd be like, I don't remember. So a girl from our ball team was sending me ball fees. Okay. Question is, what sport do we play? Now, the problem here is slow pitch can be spelt many different ways. Mm. It can be S-L-O-W space P-I-T-C-H. It can be S-L-O dash P-I-T-C-H. It can be one word. It's a word that nobody really knows the correct spelling to. Maybe it's just ball. Tried that. Didn't work. No. How many chances do you get? I think I had five chances, and then now it's locked and shut down, and she'll have to resend the money, and I have to send a text about doing that. Just the the goal of the security question is that the other person can get the answer easily. Here's another guy from my ball team sent me money. Okay. What time does cops start? Is what his security question was. That's a great security question. If you know, you know. Okay. Well, what is it? Four o'clock. Damn it. You're right. So the, it's from Step Brothers. It's from Step Brothers, and that's how the one brother busted Will Ferrell's character uh, playing his drums is because he said he was sweaty because he was really into watching cops. He's like, oh, I know you're lying because cops doesn't start till four. Yeah. So, but again, Not something I knew off the top of my head. What time does cop start? So (laughs) I take a bunch of guesses, get locked out, have to send the text. I mean, these are these are all complaint 2022 complaints. Back in the day, you used to get a check from somebody. And if they like wrote over the line or had the wrong date on there, then you'd have to go back and get another check and then physically go to the bank again. So it's gotten much better than it used to be. Yeah, we can't complain too much. But just pick questions that people know the answers to. That's all I'm saying. Samantha wrote in, I have auto deposit, but my mom's question when she sends me money is, what resort did we stay at? We haven't gone anywhere (laughs) together since 2013. I literally never remember resorts that I'm at. People are like, oh, you were in Mexico where? I'm like, 
I don't, I don't. Yeah, you don't even know the city that I you went to. No idea. You know how many drinks it takes before you fall asleep poolside. That's the kind of information you retain. Yeah, eight. <laughs> Lindsay says, my security question is often, what is my dog's name? Because I talk about him nonstop so people know uh, the answer. To Great that. answer. That's really good. Unless there's seven different spellings of that name, you know? Maybe when she talks about her dog, she's constantly going, uh, this is my dog, Rosie. R-O-S-I-E. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Things are expensive right now. It's ridiculous. Inflation is going up. Wages aren't. All in all, I think a lot of people are struggling going into debt, especially with that Oilers playoff run. People spend way more than they should have going to games, and I think everybody's just having a rough go. So we wanted to know what your favorite super cheap meal or food item is. Like, what's your go-to? Alex said uh, he gets the big pork loin from Costco. And it's about 18 bucks, and then you can cut it into pork chops. And it works out to about 225 per chop, mm -hmm. which is a per meal, he says. For a family of four, that's amazing. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, what did we eat? And it took us a couple days to finish it for like 13 bucks. Oh, we talked about this the other day. It's the taco kits from Costco. Yeah, they're good. And you don't have to cook anything. You yeah. literally just heat up the chicken if you want to, or you can eat it cold and it's just as delicious. 780-784-7107. Andrea wrote in saying my meal hack is to go to BP's on Pasta Tuesday. It's so affordable and you still have your night out. Anyway, because they give you so much sauce, you ask for a to-go container and take home the leftover sauce, and you can use it for lunch or dinner the following day. Honestly, this works almost anywhere they serve pasta. Most places are so generous generous with sauce mm. portions. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I like the places that offer free soup and salad, too, like oh, yeah, Olive sure. Garden and Eastside Mario's. Yeah, and then you bring home your actual meal. You have a couple bites, and then you save it for the next day. That's always my plan, and then I end up eating it oh, anyway. Yeah. But... Are you kidding me? I get in the car, and I'm already opening up those <laughs> breadsticks, like driving home. 780-784-7107. Some great suggestions rolling in here. Uh, mm -hmm. Stephanie says my go-to cheap meal is packaged ramen noodles cooked with frozen veggies and then scrambled eggs and sriracha on top. That sounds really good. That does sound good. Potatoes are really cheap. That's a good point, Kevin. And, uh, I mean, chop them up into hash browns, put that in a bowl with some scrambled eggs, sriracha, and, like, that's so filling. You know what I'm finding is super cheap and probably one of the best ways to consume protein when you're looking to not gain a bunch of weight, uh, is the jugs of egg whites. Mm. I find them to be super reasonably priced. They're like five bucks, and you can probably get, the for the like, big one, yeah. you can probably get like 20, 30 servings of eggs out of that. Like, that's a, that's a good deal. I actually was talking to a woman that works at, um, like, a supplement store. Okay. And I was asking, like, I really want to up my protein, but like you said, like, you don't want to have, like, too many calories that go with it. Or, like, just massive steaks every night. Right, exactly. So she said to, like, after a workout, you make your protein shake, like your protein powder with water. And she said, add egg white, put the mm. lid on it, shake it up. She's like, I know it sounds disgusting. Yeah. She's like, but you're getting that extra protein and it actually just tastes more creamy, which I thought was interesting if anybody is trying to up their protein. That's a great tip. I feel like you can get salmonella. No. Nah. For me, eating raw eggs, but I mean, it's Rocky very Balboa rare. did it, so yeah. I can do it too. <laughs> Jamie wrote in saying noodles and V8. <clears throat> so you boil the noodles and you pour V8 over top. That sounds kind of gross, but I'm willing to try it. Sorry, I wasn't. You pour <laughs> noodles and V8, oh. like the juice. Yeah, I love V8. I mean, I don't know if I do. I don't actually know if I've ever had V8. It's really good. Is it like a spicy Caesar kind of, but just there's no vodka in it? Yeah, I'd say that's the closest thing I could think of. More of like a Bloody Mary, like the tea, because okay. it's more tomato juicy than it is clam. But yeah, it's good. Okay, this is going to be a bit of a niche comment about Bloody Marys, but I need to know if anyone else remembers this. The movie Death Becomes Her. Bruce Willis. First scene. He's drinking a Bloody Mary neat. There's no ice in it. Watched it at a young age. Have always wanted it. <laughs> Anyone else? Or is that so niche that I sound insane right now? <laughs> that is a throwback. It though, is. Right? It really is. Sonia wrote in saying, happy Friday, everyone. The poor man's hamburger helper. Hamburger, KD, mixed with corn. 
so good. Oh, that sounds all right. It sounds okay. Yeah. I'm mad at it. This is a really good brainstorm. I'm going to remember a lot of these suggestions. Tomato rice. Uh, Jeanette says... Okay, what? Okay, Nolan says, I have a zero sugar monster every day for breakfast. <laughs> Isn't that an energy drink? Yeah. <laughs> Three for six fifty at 7-Eleven. Delicious, cheap, and nutritious. <laughs> is it, though? Somebody brought up the five bucks deal, and I actually have a hack for that. What do you mean the five bucks deal? The, at, at Pizza Hut? Yeah, five bucks, five bucks, five bucks. Yeah. So you have to order... I think the deal is now you order a large, and then you get three mediums for five bucks so for your large just get a cheese pizza and then you're only paying 20 bucks for that and okay. then five bucks five bucks five bucks for the mediums and that's the ones that those are the ones that you put the toppings on exactly and then you can actually freeze just mm -hmm. flat out let the pizza cool okay. throw it in ziploc bags and freeze like two slices great for lunches throw it like, in the air fryer yeah what are you doing over I'm, there? I'm fighting on the internet. Stop. Well, I hate when you do this, especially on a Friday. Good vibes only. Who are you fighting with? Kyle KB is his name on and Twitter. On Twitter. Ooh. Okay, so people are talking about that Edmonton got shafted from the 2026 World Cup. Okay. Right? Yes. And that's fairly unfair, seeing how we've been really embracing the, the game selling out stadiums when it's minus 25. We have one of the world's best players that grew up here. Mm -hmm. It just felt like it was meant to be, that we'd get some games. We didn't. Of course, they go to Vancouver and Toronto. <laughs> and people are teeing off on it online. And this one guy specifically is just really annoying. So I'm writing him. Does he live in Edmonton? No, he lives in Vancouver, and he wrote, Canada's third-tier city demanding VIP treatment and gets shown the door. Canada has three international cities, Vancouver, Montreal, and Toronto. Edmonton doesn't even raid in its own province. Uh, we have an Edmonton International Airport. Yeah. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks very much, Kyle. And then Chris wrote, Edmonton has been a great home for FIFA events for decades. Chris is from Edmonton. Standing up for a city. Love to see it. And being kind about it. Yep. Kyle responds, yeah, secondary events. It's not a world-class city, though. It lacks <gasps> for venue quality and infrastructure that both Vancouver and Toronto have as huge international tourist destinations. Vancouver has hosted the same FIFA events and also something world-class, the Olympics. He goes on. He's arguing with everybody. And I'm writing him. What did you say? Your tweets are peak insufferable Vancouver turd. <laughs> Keep telling everyone how amazing the third most unaffordable city in the world to live in is Kyle. That's what I got so far. I, 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 would, I would love to say classic Kyle, but I know we have a lot of Kyle <laughs> listeners that are amazing. That would also stand up for our city. Ugh, it's just so frustrating. I hate people that chirp the city that have never been here. I've lived in a, a few of major cities in Canada. This is by far my favorite. Mm -hmm. The people are wonderful. The yeah. events in the summer are incredible. Yeah. We embrace things like soccer, a sport that uh, uh, most Canadians have not embraced like hockey, for example. Mm -hmm. It, But yet when it's Team Canada and they're coming here, when the Women's World Cup was here, like they couldn't rave enough about how this community embraced that event. And uh, the games in the winter when it was minus 25 and they were sold out. Like this city deserves Dude, at even, least respect. Okay, even like we have Elks tickets to give away. Mm -hmm. We have another pair to give away this morning. And yesterday, all we asked our listeners was, if you're fully committed to go to the game on Saturday against the Rough Riders. Even if it's pouring. Even if it's pouring, text us. Hundreds, hundreds of people stepping up, writing and saying, absolutely, I'd be there. Because this city rules. I know. I'm just. Uh, I get it. Okay, what's his at? It's my turn. What should I say? I want to find out his address. <laughs> I'll punch him in the no, mouth. No, no, no. We do not. We do not. Condone violence? Ever, ever. Mm. Just our words on the internet. He's from Vancouver. I know I'd win the fight. Came across what might be one of the funniest relationship questions ever that uh, has taken off a bit online recently. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are enjoying this question. Well, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Even the person that shared it, it's not even her problem. She just set, shared a screenshot on Twitter that has 20,000 likes on Twitter alone. Let's get at and it. And so she quoted it saying, this is the most spectacular relationship problem I have ever read. <laughs> Buckle up. Backstory. Me and my boyfriend were on holiday a few months ago. 
We were in an all-inclusive resort and we were standing in one of the shops in the lobby where you can buy extra snacks and stuff. A very posh British man walked in with his 12-ish year old son and they were looking around the shop. They went over to where the chips were and the boy seemed very interested in the Pringles. The father then asks him in a very cutesy, possibly over the top for his age voice, do you want some Pwingies for the room? <laughs> Me and my boyfriend found this quite funny. The first few days were fine. We were both joking about it and kept repeating it to one another as it was a funny way to refer to Pringles, especially as the man was talking to his son as if he was a baby. This was at the start of our two-week holiday. My, bo- my boyfriend did not stop saying, do you want some Pwingies for the room? For the whole two weeks we were on holiday, he would literally say it Once a minute. (laughs) He would even torment me by starting a sentence completely unrelated to it and then finishing it with, but do you want some (laughs) Pwingies for the room? As if some sort of sick punchline. It has now been three months since we've returned and he will not stop saying, do you want some Pwingies for the room? And it's driving me insane. I have begged him to stop. He honestly thinks I'm just playing along with the joke. I can't have a serious conversation with him because he always manages to slip in, do you want some Pwingies for the room? We've been together for five years. It was absolutely (laughs) fine up until this point. But this man that I want to spend the rest of my life with, I don't want to see him at all at this point because I'm afraid. (laughs) I'm afraid that when I turn a corner, he's going to say, do you want some Pwingies? (laughs) I refuse to talk to him. I'm honestly afraid. Am I blowing this out of proportion? Uh, Chelsea on the text line says, dump him. Wingies. Could you handle that? I mean, if it's happening once a minute, I don't know. Yeah. But I got to say, I just want to meet this old British man, the posh <laughs> British man that turned to his 12 year old and said, you want some Pwingies for the room? <laughs> Uh, Alyssa says, I would love some Pwingies. Okay, Pwingies actually sounds so good right now. <laughs> It is a really funny thing for him to continue to bring up. The thing that's brutal is if he does marry her, he's going to say it at the altar. (laughs) Or like as he's carrying her in, what do they call that? When you like cross the bedroom line while holding somebody across the threshold or something. He's going to definitely ask because he's going to be walking into a room. (laughs) Do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? And he's going to go... I want some wingies for the room. <laughs> Shane says, I'm literally crying. This is one of the funniest stories I've ever heard. I'm a big fan of that boyfriend. Okay, but also there's a therapist that wrote. I'd just like to point out the troubling issue here. As much as it's funny, because the word wingies <laughs> is hilarious. Um, <clears throat> this boyfriend has disregard for this request that his girlfriend is making. Right. After five years, she's made the request. She'd like to be heard. And she would like her request honored. But also, like, do you want some Pwingies for the room? Mm-hmm. It's so funny. I can never look at Pringles the same ever again. No, I think you, this guy kind of wrecked it for everybody is the problem. Rachel wrote in saying, I would cover the bed with Pwingies. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing this weekend? Oh, man. Uh, I think I'm going to go to the dry cleaners. <laughs> Sweet weekend. That's all I have planned. Seriously, it feels so good to be like, oh, I don't have. Can I give a you a million things to do? Can I give you a few jobs for around the house? No, I'm actually busy. I you go, just told us that yeah. I, I, there's a lineup at the dry cleaners. <laughs> okay. The Ryder and Lisa replay. Brought to you by Action Furnace. Fixed right or it's free. Play 107.